नमस्कार सुप्रभात गुड मॉर्निंग देवी और सज्जनों भाइयों और उनकी बहनों आप सुन रहे हैं मियाओ जिंदगी और मियाओ वन ऑफ फोर एफएम मेरा नाम है रवि और जैसे कि मैंने आपसे पहले कहा कि हमें ज्वाइन करने वाली हैं डॉक्टर सुधा अय्यर हु इज फ्रॉम सृष्टि फाउंडेशन डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट सृष्टि अन्नम डॉट ओ आर जी इज दी ऑल इंपॉर्टेंट वेबसाइट जहां पर आपके पाप का घड़ा अगर फुट चुका है तो फिर आप उसे थोड़ा सा वो कर सकते हैं क्या कर सकते हैं मतलब जितने भी पाप आपने किए हैं लाइफ में उन्हें थोड़ा धो सकते हैं कुछ अच्छा काम करके इट्स द यर एंड एंड दिस इज योर गोल्डन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू बी अ पार्ट ऑफ अ नोबल कॉज फर्स्ट एंड Almost, Sudha ji, welcome to our studios. Thank you so much for taking our time and joining us. Thank you, Ravi. It's wonderful to be here, and good morning to all your listeners. Absolutely. And uh, before we talk about Shristi Foundation, let me talk a bit about Sudha ji. She spent about 13 years in the US. She has got two MS degrees, and of course, uh, she has a PhD from top universities in the US. She is also the National Healthcare Chair for Young Indians. She has been a part of this noble cause with Shristi Foundation for the past three years, if I'm not wrong. Uh, Three and a, oh yeah, almost three and a half years. Okay, how did it happen to you? See, I am a management student myself, and uh, we obviously knew about the Maslow's theory of motivation and the different needs that you have. So, is this your self-actualization need that you have realized that oh my God, you know what? I have achieved so much in my life, but it's about time that I give it back to the society. Yeah, I don't even know if I thought that much. Okay, it was just something I had to do. Okay. and uh, you know the the look around you and so many people are hungry so many children are begging hmm. and that's bothered me all my life and at some point it was just time to say okay you know don't look at the size of the huge problem in india don't worry about it just get in and start doing it okay now i was talking to you off air and you spoke about the urge that you had deep inside i have met a few people who despite having everything in their life i'm sure you have you know you've had the best quality of life staying in the us and you're so highly qualified and obviously the recognition the likes but despite that there is this you know sense of incompleteness inside and then you feel that oh my god you know i have not achieved anything in my life i have to do this i have to work for other people and then probably i'll get my satisfaction did you also go through a similar process i think that uh, uh, yeah you you want to i think there's a compelling need to do something okay. and i i think more than you know even thinking of giving back mm. there is something of self actualization mm. that there is a certain potential within me okay. that that i can do something more okay. and i'm and I, it's not happening okay. that there's more mm. and uh, you know i think finding this mm. um, really satisfied that you know it it, it absolutely filled the spot okay. in in what is the more in mm. my life okay and uh, that's how it so started so take us through the whole journey how did it all happen as and when did you think of this and when did you implement this who all helped you out in in the yeah. venture actually it was pretty amazing we mm. were we have a bunch of startups and we were sitting down and talking about you know how funding is less and stuff like that and suddenly you know i uh, i jump up and i say mm. to my two partners that mm. you know what we are going to do mm. is start a program called srishti annam mm. and we are going to feed 100 to 150 people a day to start with okay and we are there talking about cash flow Hmm. in our companies because we are entrepreneurs hmm. and uh, my partner one of my partners who is an inspiration jumps up hmm. and shakes my hand and says pats me on the back and says brilliant that's what we are going to do okay so we didn't have money okay. it is not that the companies were giving back big profits hmm. but if we waited for that you know hmm. i felt we'd be too old and we we'll missed the bus 7000 indians 10000 indians 5000 children dying every day hmm. you have to start somewhere hmm. my other partner who also happens to my husband hmm. shook my hand and said okay hmm. we're on hmm. this was august of 96 Hmm. and i mean uh, of 2006 i mean hmm. and um, I, w- i had been selected for the um, the very prestigious aspen institute's india leadership initiative uh, you know uh, fellowship leadership program hmm. and they said you had to do a project hmm. and i said okay this is the project uh, that i want to do and they said we are on hmm. so from that time we just started planning hmm. in november we rolled it out okay november of 2006 of 2006 and since then hmm. every single day at hmm. 12:15 every single day hmm. we fed uh, you know either 150 people or 550 people as the case might be hmm. and uh, we have at least hmm. there many days there are many more hmm. and today till today more than 350000 meals have been served hmm. to absolute destitute people wow and how do you identify that they are absolutely destitute people see the thing is that uh, the people who come to us are hmm. either children hmm. or they're very old hmm. you know they're 70 it hmm. it really doesn't matter hmm. you know and they're on the streets hmm. so we're catering right now to the poor so do you actually poor. go and pick them up from there or no. how does it work no no hmm. we just uh, went around all the places and we're doing this in kakinada to start with hmm. we just went around and we have a center hmm. see there are other we looked at several models there are other models where you know you just dole out the food hmm. but we wanted a place to which they can come so hmm. we wanted transformation to start okay so we just everybody we just give send out word that there's food there and hmm. you know of course that kind of thing spreads right. and so people come hmm. people of 
all descriptions come hmm. then you can identify people who are who are begging on the streets who are homeless and destitute hmm. you can tell right, right i mean right. there's no uh, you, hmm. you see some of the pictures no, you know rocket science, you, actually, it's you not rocket science and and most of them are completely malnourished hmm. you know you can you look at some of the pictures you'll know hmm. so we just uh, so you mean uh, to say they look like me a little bit and just, yeah <laughs> little, just <laughs> like on the yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. this is the guy needs yeah. to be <laughs> okay hmm. so we just uh, spread the word and people started coming okay. and many of them i know more above 70 80 abandoned hmm. their children Hmm. So you you know it doesn't really matter, hmm. and they're begging on the streets, and hmm. then there are other people who are disabled or ill, hmm. and so that that's it's not a rocket science. Hmm. If there are people who are able, hmm. we still get them in on the first day. We hmm. don't know someone who comes to eat; it's come for a reason, hmm. and later we talk to them, hmm. uh, we counsel them. Hmm. We don't make it a habit. We okay. don't we don't feed able people okay. uh, as a, uh, because they can. And but we, hmm. if they need help, we help them skill. Hmm. So we've you know trained several security guards and hmm. you know things like that, and you know uh, if they need. something we So basically facilitate. once they are met with as in the basic needs are met with then probably you'll give them a little bit of counseling and tell them what they can do out of their lives and how they can right. improve the situation. And we and we we've employed several people okay. among them. Okay. Many of the people who used to come there to eat are now working in Sushi Foundation. Mm-hmm. So they're doing the cutting we've and cleaning and we get a salary and you know the vegetables and you know, the cooking needs to happen every day. Right. Or they're working as security guards in different places or they're working elsewhere in the foundation. So it's pretty good. Okay. Or we you know even at other places mm-hmm. where they become employable. Mm-hmm. and and more than anything else i think it's a question it's a question of increasing the self esteem okay even the older people who come hmm. uh you know we we some of them drink have a drinking problem when hmm. we bring them in initially hmm. because they need a place to start hmm. and you need to establish the trust with them right otherwise why will they listen to you yeah okay. they're on the road and you know you should tell them calm karo begging mat karo hmm. they're like oh guys you know i'm hungry well, well, what what, what yeah. do you know of Absolutely. my problems hmm. here you're feeding them and you're relating to them at their level you know their problem hmm. and then you're talking to them. it establishes immense trust mm. especially now that we've been doing it for three and a half years right now tell me one thing there are obviously a thousand problems that we have in india as yeah. in you name it and we have it yeah. <laughs> that is one department where we don't lag behind true but why did you choose this department why did you choose feeding people as your priority you, you know something you'll be amazed mm. in today you know you know um professor a nobel laureate amartya sen mm. says that india's largest single problem is that of hunger mm. and the amazing part is that it's not so well known hmm. and nor is it you know a, a matter or a burning issue for common people and it should be hmm. just think about it ravi hmm. one third hmm. of india is hungry every single day hmm. so you and me hmm. the third person we meet is hungry <laughs> yeah, Suresh, Suresh, yeah, boss. Suresh, Suresh, your boss is hungry. Yeah, he is hungry. He hasn't had breakfast. Yeah, yeah you know, but yeah. uh, you know, every third Indian is hungry. Three hundred and twenty-three million Indians, mm. and this is an FAO estimate, and mm. I'm sure there are more. Mm. Indians are hungry. Go to bed hungry every night. Wow. So what happens is that, and seven mm. uh, to ten thousand Indians die every day of hunger. Every day of hunger. That's is more. It? Yeah, that's more than the people. How come these stats are never? openly revealed as in we talk about the growth that we are predicting 8% growth 10% growth this that why don't people talk about the fact that there are 7000 people you know that's day? what amazes me mm. i really don't know and and part of srishti annam's uh, whole theme is mm. this awareness must go out mm. people must say you know i, can, I this is not acceptable to me that one third of my country is hungry every day absolutely and the 10000 people are dying of hunger and on the other hand you have people wasting food and throwing it out and Absolutely, mm. absolutely. I mean, and we and five thousand of those seven to ten thousand who die every day of hunger are children. Mm. I mean, we, and we have you. You won't believe it. We have of the world's hungry, mm. we house one third of them in India. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Other than India's one third of India's population being hungry. So it's kind of uh, it's 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 really disturbing. it's very disturbing. So mm. if it is India's largest thing mm. uh, problem, mm. and it seemed to me to be the uh, the problem that I mean, I'm my PhD is in health services, mm. and I said. Okay, health hmm. services is fine. Hmm. You're not getting food. One third of my country doesn't have food. Hmm. That's a food and water. Yeah, even the medicines won't work if there's mm-hmm. no food inside. Hey, that's that's causes me. You know, so many of the problems. Hmm. So we said, okay, let's let's face let's face that head on. Okay. What we're doing is the feeding part. There's a lot more, right? Hmm. I mean, the the food for food for all um, initiative by the UPA needs to go through. Hmm. But even so, Ravi, even hmm. if that happens, and you know, and and we're not yet sure, hmm. though that was one of their first mandates when hmm. they took up. Hmm. Even if that happens hmm. you're always going to have that section of society that falls through the cracks absolutely which is whom we are catering to right from the beginning setting up a uh, you know and i would like to have you know uh, see hmm. the, the different things to be done hmm. this definitely has a role any time 
Okay. The feeding always will have a role. There'll always be old people and these children who can't fend for themselves. Well, that's the noble cause that uh, they have undertaken at uh, Shristi Annam Foundation. And guess what? You can also be a part of this noble cause. All you have to do is give us a call on four double zero six one zero four eight. If you have any doubts, if you need any clarity as far as the foundation is concerned, or if you want to contribute on your own, then it's a very small amount. It's a very insignificant amount for your pockets. But imagine you're giving life to somebody else. Think of it that way. And this is also the year end, so I guess all the sins that you have committed right through the year, time to wash them off. Four double zero six one zero four eight. The conversation will continue right here on Mia One Hundred Four Point Eight FM.